Merhaba herkese, hoş geldiniz hepiniz. Ee, bir saat olarak e, bugünden itibaren e, ayın 15'ine kadar, yani aslında Ocak ayı boyunca Sinan Eren Erkin Küratörlüğü'nde kendine ait bir hatırlama isimli sergi ev sahipliği yapıyoruz. Sergi kapsamında Ocak ayının ilk yarısı e, Monika Cizik'in e, Body Say isimli işine, e, videosuna ve mekansal yerleşimine girişte de görmüşsünüzdür. Birazdan konuşmada hepsinden bahsedeceğiz. Bugün Monika, sergi küratörü Sinan Erener ile birlikte Monika ve aynı zamanda serginin ikinci yarısında işine ev sahibi yapacağımız Merve Vural var. Bugün üçü beraber konuşacaklar. Dolayısıyla aslında Monika'nın videosundan sonra şu anda izlediğimizde Merve Vural'ın çalışması 15'inden sonra da onun sergisinin, bu serginin devamı olarak gelip ziyaret edebilirsiniz. Ben maskelerimizle konuşup boyunca çıkarmamızı rica ediyoruz. Başlayabiliriz. Sözü size bırakıyorum. Teşekkür ederim. I'm American interest. I'm Turkish a little bit. Herkese merhaba. Bugün ilk bu serginin aslında iki parçalı bölümünün ilk bölümünü açılışını yapacağız. Serginin açılışını yapacağız. Monika'nın işiyle başlayacağız ve mekandaki bir yerleştirme de Merve ve Monika'nın birlikte yaptığı işlerden oluşan bir yerleştirme de bize eşlik ediyor ve sergi boyunca da bu kalacak. Ee, bu şey boyunca, sergi boyunca e, bunların hepsi gezilebilir olacak fakat ikinci yarısında serginin yani Merve'nin işinin e, video olarak döndüğü bölümde yerleştirmede de bir farklılık olacak. Bu sergi bu şekilde ilerleyecek ve e, bununla ilgili ayrıca bilgi de vereceğiz. Şimdi isterseniz başlayalım. E, ben sözü daha çok sanatçılara vereceğim ve Konuşma boyunca da ben sorularımın bir kısmını telefona yazdığım için sürekli telefona bakmak durumunda olacağım. Aklınızda bulunsun. Başka bir şey değil. Sadece sorulara bakacağım buradan. <gülüyor> I know that is a bit... It's um, okay, it's okay. I can imagine. Yeah, it's, it's almost like that, but I'm maybe a bit used to it. So, uh, we'll start with your videos and maybe with the introduction of part of your videos and then we can explore the the, the, uh, the, the exhibition in your words. Uh, and then I'd like to be more as a moderator than the, the speaker. And I'd like you to leave the speech, leave the scene to you. So first of all, maybe we can start with you, Monica, a little bit, and then we can um, continue with Mary and then the conversation may go on. Um, my first question is, which is uh, actually the most important question maybe, is when did you start to this project and what was, what was the, uh, the source of all these layered videos and this version also? So before I, I answer, I just quickly wanted to just say thank you for uh, inv inviting uh, and uh, putting us together because it was really like huge pleasure to collaborate uh, with you guys and we found like really nice connection with Marv so lots of things like just when we were in the process like they they somehow brilliantly matched uh, so yeah thank you so much for inviting um, and to answer where to start right a <laughs> question um, I forgot fully what the question. The, <laughs> what was the initial point to, for you to make this project? Ah, the initial where, point. Where yes, to yes, start yes, and yes, how yes, did, yes. did you start? Well, it started in um, 2016, um, and I went for a residency to Signal Culture um, in Owego, in upstate New York. It's a tiny residency that supports video artists with uh, analog tools. To, to process um, video in real time. And they also have their obscure cameras. Uh, so one of those cameras that I found, there was this video Barbie, and I just was playing there with, with, that, uh, with that object. And then um, I was shortly living in London. I was doing their next change in Slate. And uh, during this half a year, I, I just come across um, that I could easily get those Barbies on online. So I, I purchased a couple of them and then um, just began process with filming and somehow creating the, 
the narration. And uh, at this point, um, I was somehow more drawn to interact with this uh, object as a, as a camera, as, a, as, an, as an object that, as a man working with moving image, I found it as a brilliant tool to somehow break the ice with, and it, it, it just creates a reaction. And um, yeah, and then as I've been gathering more, more material and I had uh, my degree show also, um, I had maybe like 20 of those Barbies and I was sending them to different participants, um, primarily women and um, they were both amateur and professional filmmakers and they were making their own, own uh, videos. And then as it, this process developed, then I somehow um, I, I got the support to, to continue the bodice in more um, literate way, uh, meaning I actually went to different places and, and work something in between documentary and, and performative uh, fictional way. Um, yeah, and I've been just gathering this footage together. It's interesting that you're using this kind of Barbie dolls because this special model and it's discontinued, I think, after some kind of controversies happened in New York, in in United States in general, which are bullshit to me, actually. Um, I'm not sure if this discontinued because you can still buy it um, new. Still. Yeah, yeah. But I, maybe uh, like still unboxed available. or something. Does does. Is, does, do they produce I, I'm not sure if they produce, but they, you can still like, I think, they were produced in 2011 and I'm not sure fully about the production line. Mm -hmm. But you gather the images, the moving images, the videos and stitch it together, make the, uh, the post-production and make the um, half documentary, half um, fiction. But, and then you, there is a, a huge maybe impact on you, the, uh, the cinematography of Stanley Kubrick. And we can see the traces of him in, in this documentary of yours or the, the video of yours. Can you tell me about it a little mm -hmm. bit? Um, also with the title, because we have the, the, the body and the Odyssey and you, you know, rest. Well, at the, at, the, at the time when I was, I somehow wanted to make a contrast between different methods of filmmaking. Um, yeah, and, and, and this um, motifs of space traveling or um, somehow like speculative fiction, um, I was interested in exploring this more. And uh, yeah, I somehow chose this uh, Stanley Kubrick. Also maybe because at the time I was in London and I visited the archives. Um, and, and I like this very huge precision in his way of making movies and how much, like it's just like it's completely different worlds and, and I thought it would be interesting to just like try making your own bodice with that Barbie doll uh, as a complete different strategies. Mm in filmmaking, so kind of exploring more more filmmaking processes. You actually referred to the documentation, to the video, as your own odyssey in some, some way. Um, so what is the meaning of odyssey for you? What is the difference between, comparing to the space odyssey, I mean, what is the difference to this kind of filmmaking and your kind of filmmaking? What is the, the the, the, the real meaning of Odyssey and the, the, the way or the, the learning experience or gathering ex experience, teaching it together, is all kind of stuff. What, what is your way to create the, art, the idea of the artwork? And generally, I mean. Um, I mean, uh, I think in, in um, also in this, in this project, but also in some previous uh, moving image works of mine, uh, this, this friction between um, documentary and, and fiction, it's been present. So 
I do interact with like um, new places that I, I encounter or like uh, when I'm just, it's kind of also a lot about energies with people. So they, they kind of create um, the content of it. So every time like I met someone interesting, not really interesting, like the, it's, it's, I don't want to use these adjectives in that way. No, but, but interesting uh, is a good choice because interesting, the, um, the concept of interesting is depends on the people and mm. what you call interesting and then so on. But every time there was some kind of interaction or, or some, some thing that it was, it's somehow like natural when the camera is out. And then when the camera is out, it's also not fully scripted or directed. It's, a, it's kind of being in a moment. And then this camera is there and it, 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 it archives, it documents. And then maybe it takes a few years or uh, the, that it stays on that drive. And then, yeah, and then I, I, when, when it comes to this editing process, then then it's interesting way like to revisit these moments and then and then make a new fiction out of it. So I guess that creating fiction is always coming through this uh, editing process. This is the same in our situation also. <laughs> so maybe you can tell us a little bit of the uh, the room that you created for this exhibition, because you you are exhibiting also the Barbie girls, the video girls, and that there is the whiteboard and some instructions written on it, and then you are planning actually. In, to make a workshop about it, so you you will play with together the together with Marv. Yeah, yeah. Is it together. Mm. Yeah, so it was. You, you will deal with the uh, the notion of the archive and creating an archive, revisiting mm -hmm. visiting the archive, or I don't know, maybe corrupting the archive. Uh, it's it's it can be it can be interpreted as corruption also maybe in some way. But what was the idea? Because in this uh, room. We can see the works of the, the, the pieces from your work and pieces from Mary's work. So it's collaborating in somehow, but it's really um, not easy to, to understand which is belonging to who and so on. It's completely merged together, and I think it's a good coincidence and also a good collaboration. Because, because um, before I, I Try. I was planning the exhibition. Honestly, I didn't know that you were that looking alike in in style, in in making of art, in in this mindset. And you start a good collaboration, and then all I had to do is watch you making and realizing the whole process. So the idea about the the room, I think maybe it's the uh, speciality of this exhibition alone. And what do you want to say about it? <laughs> I will ask the same question to you, don't worry. Thanks, <laughs> um, Well, I think it's, um, for me, especially every time like that I, get a, I get an opportunity to um, show my works in the context of um, exhibition space uh, I, I, I do like to show the video works with um, with some with, with 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 an installation with a sculpture works and uh, yeah and that was and also I've been thinking um, about me coming here as a as, as somehow how something in between a residency and and the exhibition making so it's it's a fantastic opportunity to to um, yeah to continue the, that process and to and to gather more um, more footage that is happening now and uh, and and as you said we had a we have a nice connection with Marv and I'm really looking forward to see how what we will what we will do during this laboratory and <laughs> yeah they basically they're like um seven video barbies they're installed together with Marv's and my um pieces i just recently made a bronze armor that is also a holder of these barbies so the idea is to 
that these bronze pieces are being embedded on, on, on the body, kind of as a clothing uh, as well. Um, yeah, and as we were intro introducing our works to each other online and on the Zoom conversations, it just came naturally. And then another great coincidence that like the space also brilliantly like divide, um, yeah, divide the space for this processes to happen. Can you call it a space odyssey? <laughs> yeah, it can be called whatever. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> but I, um, like, like I said, uh, you, your idea to divide the space in different parts and use it is, I think, a bit uh, unusual for this place because generally uh, we we are always seeing just a video or maybe some part. Maybe sometimes they're using also upstairs, but this kind of divide division on the space I think it's it can be interpreted as new so I, I also like it I think thanks to both of you actually um, uh, maybe I'll ask one more question about your video actually because then I try to um, I like to continue with Marve for now uh, the frog and the Barbie girl are the two um, key motives in your video. Who is the frog? We know a little bit about the Barbie girl because you, you tell, told us some, some part of it, but the frog, who is the frog? Because we are seeing you also with the frog mask and then it becomes, I think, maybe a part of your personality. So, or am I, if I'm wrong, just correct me. And who's the frog? And why we are dealing with it? Because we, we, we are seeing the frog on the carpets we are seeing the frog in the video, we are seeing the part of the frog or the, the, the mask or some part in the in the room. Everywhere there's the, the green frog, like, the, but it's not Kermit, but the, who is he? Who is she? Who is they? I don't know. Um, they are uh, a character from a TV series from 90s. Uh, it's a car well, puppet theater uh addressed to children and it's frog monica and kulfon that was the original title and uh, in that children tale uh, in, poland or? in poland yeah in the children children tale the frog monica was portrayed in the kind of quite stereotypically like putting um gender features in a way that I thought it's... Uh, I just wanted to liberate this Frog Monica. So um, Frog Monica instead um, became like a Barbie uh, friend <laughs> on Earth and taking, taking her around. But, the, but both of these uh, characters, they are in this process of because the idea is to have a series. So there was first this Bodice prologue, and now I made this Bodice interlude, and there is still one more piece coming. And they are, um, these characters are maybe now in this stage of ado adolescence, so they're still like transforming and changing, and um, yeah, they are, they are exploring and experimenting. And also I have an idea about Frog, because Frog can live, uh, when the beginning of his life, he can live uh, under the sea, in the water, and also out of the water. So he has no certain space to live. He lives everywhere, like your videos, it's, it's flowing, it's, it, it can be space and, or in the earth, for everywhere. It's like the uh, same environment for, for, with Frog. Hmm. <laughs> It's amphibious, yeah, and it's it's, it's really um, an important aspect of this species, and it suits actually uh, to the character of the exhibition too, because you can see the moving image, you can see the uh, the kind of exposed exhibition, and some some carpets, some materials, and everything gathered together, it becomes something like you know in between two places in. in in earth or in the sea. 
So it becomes much more like a, uh, a gradient, like a translucent place, or I don't know, in, in the place in the fluxes. Mm. So, so I like the idea, and then it becomes better and better with your contributions. And Mary, um, your and may I add something oh, about car carpets? And also, if we think, uh, if thinking about carpets, the carpets we put uh, on the floor, and it's uh, bricks uh, or connections with floor. So in that way, with carpets uh, uh, helping, the uh, floor is changing also, like areas. So we. When we put on uh, another spaces, also change spaces too, physically and uh, mentally too. So you are you are saying that the separation also means some change too. Mm -hmm. Not it's not in a bad way, but sometimes it works in a good way too. Mm -hmm. mm, but the the, uh, the carpet with Plato had on it, it bends, so it, I think it, it gets the idea and then gives the your idea. That mm -hmm. it, especially with this one. And your video is based on the performance that you did last year. Yes. Not last year, actually. 2020. 2002. So years ago, so we are in no, uh, no less. Uh, it's two years ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. so we have the same confusion because the, the COVID situation, I think, yes. it changed the conception of the time you know, in, in our minds. So what, what was your idea? So because I'm, I'm asking you because it was belong, it belonged to a series of uh, performances, but you, cho you choose one, one of them, to show here. Mm -hmm. And what was the idea of the whole performances, and then the um, the choice of yours for this exhibition? Uh, this uh, I, two years ago, I were in a, a Myrna Brunch exhibition in the Cyclops Sabanji Museum. Uh, they made an open call and apply as as a bit a project. And uh, normally, uh, I, uh, with my bachelor degree, I graduated from uh, painting departments. I only use was uh, painting things, stuff, etc. But when I uh, started my uh, master degree, I, I started to use uh, different materials like videos for everything. Then uh, I started to make videos in 2018. And then uh, when I uh, realized that to creating my videos in the background, I have to uh, cr uh, carry everything. For example, I have to carry my camera, to carry my stuff, to carry uh, some objects, tools uh, everywhere. And behind of the video, there was a performance too. So uh, I decided to use this idea as a performance, to creating video as a performance. So uh, I uh, made a project, and this is the, when I'm making this project, I made uh, a reference from uh, Rubens' uh, painting, um, mirror, uh, Venus in front of the mirror. Because in that in that painting, the Venus is uh, sitting uh, behind and uh, holding the mirror and check with you, and she knows uh, also she knows uh, she looks and looking too. So this idea um, interesting me that the mirror is uh, like a uh, space and like a camera. So I think about that. How can I uh, turn into this mirror idea like as a camera thing? So then I put a camera and I made a video. And at the same time, I made a projection with my images. And uh, people all, uh, all at the same time can see my uh, video projects with cameras see me and also see me at the same time when I'm making videos too. So uh, this process coming and uh, I made uh, nine videos, nine projects. Uh, this crystal ways, uh, 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 your horoscope says Joseph Boys, uh, white uh, horse, etc. My videos, and I choose uh, this one. I choose this one. <laughs> Why I choose this one? Because. Um, Nasıl cevap vereceğim? Çok heyecanlandığım için şey yapamadım. <gülüyor> Kusura bak. Tamam. But the interesting thing in your video, actually, in both of your workflow, I know that you are dealing with huge kind of footages and you have to eliminate some of them. You have to make um, the, the, you have to make some choices as the editor of the, uh, the, the footage and then come up with, uh, with an idea of like around 20 or 
30 minutes of footage. To reflect that kind of flow, I think it is the, uh, the core of your artistic process, an artistic expression. So that actually um, was the most interesting part in your artwork. So I can see in Marga's artwork too, because I know that is, there is like, there are like more than 72 hours of footage and you just split up and just stitch together to come up with yeah. 15 minutes of footage. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's just shows how much um, of an information you have to deal with. And then to show the, the process and also the making process of the, the performance and the uh, just in front of the live audience actually. Mm -hmm. Because it was on the live audience and you just recorded yourself with, with a video mm -hmm. playing on the back. Mm -hmm. But the idea, the relation with the video and your performance was maybe the most interesting part of it because you were using the crystal ways Mm -hmm. The so-called crystal ways, it wasn't crystal, but you, you play the image of the crystal ways, which we can see in the entrance for now, actually. Mm -hmm. And the video was uh, the, the production line of a crystal ways. And then you were trying to, to fix the ways with the scotch tape. Yes. You, you had the uniform, the ideas were based on uniformity, maybe. The, the video just plays on the back and creates, a, I don't know, maybe a chaotic image, but you had your soldier uniform, mm -hmm. which was, the contrasts are most interesting part of it. Can you explain it a little bit? I have to say this idea came to me that one, uh, two years, two, two years ago, there's a, a, in America, the black lives matters, th things happen. And also in uh, Belarus, there was an uh, elections. And these elections uh, has uh, election results is not uh, accepted by the government. So there is there was a lot of uh, protests and uh, these uh, events came by together and by together. And then uh, it really affects me to see uh, how to say this Soviet idea is a uh, rocking and dem democracy can't uh, represent so that uh, after when I see this, I, I watch a movie about a uh, it's called a uh, crystal swan and this is a movie about the lady uh, who wants to go to america and uh, to, to get visa she needs to uh, study um, in, a, in a in a place in, in the belarus so uh, she uh, found a fake address in a uh, bazaar but this address is uh, belong to in a uh, uh, <laughs> Bir ev, evin şeyine ait, adresine ait, herhangi bir evin Some adresine ait. Else Someone's uh, else uh, home. So uh, her journey is starting and she went this home and etc. So when I uh, watch this movie and uh, around, when she tried to find this home, there is a lot of uh, crystal factory around there. And then I realized that uh, in this Soviet area and also in Poland and all other north, north places, the crystal waste and crystal stuff is really popular and really people uh, working in the area. And so, and this idea came to me that I, I uh, use this uh, crystal like, uh, like fragile things, like democracy's fragile things. So as a Soviet, uh, things as a Soviet lady, Soviet uniform lady, I try to be Soviet lady. I try to fix it and try to make an uh, idealist, ideal, uh, and try to protect it, but I can't do it because vice versa on my background. I use a, uh, I made a coll video collage from uh, factories, uh, crystal factories and uh, Soviet post uh, Belarusian uh, protests and uh, made them together. But um, during this video of yours, we see you making this um, performance, but also at the end, you collect all this of the, those information and turn it to, into a video mm -hmm. that makes a new kind of artwork to us. So what is the difference 
for your side of the uh, in between making the performance and watching the video afterwards because um, in your part um, there will be a setup of your setup in here based on your setup actually so it will create another kind of interaction like like the room Monica realized today here so mm -hmm. what, what is the difference in between the video and the performance regarding to this uh, for me, I want to feel that uh, when I made my video, I always by myself. So I want to be uh, like uh, in front of the Venus. I want to be aware of to be watching. So I want to be check out that how I uh, behave with uh, with the visitors who see me. Am I be myself or am I be uh, the artist or whatever I created or? What is the difference? It's it's really interesting line for me, so that I I want to try it. And when I, I watched my video, it's I'm I'm really try to hold something, but at the same time it's not like what I want. Not I, I can't say, but it's really interesting mood of I mood of my I can see that like a crystal ways to to uh, make it and uh, put uh, try to save it. You, you try to fix it, but it, it doesn't it work. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't work. It can't be fixed, actually. When I realized during this uh, 70, uh, approximately 70 hours performance, uh, my pro uh, performative things to make things uh, put together and broke again. The again and again, it's like, uh, like videos. Like uh, take credit, makes directly in shape. Did, did your idea worked at the, at the the last moment too or you had to break it apart and then recreated it during the, the whole performance because when you you start to the performance you had an idea mm -hmm. how to realize it mm -hmm. and then you you encounter i think some problems or i don't know some reactions yes lots of things from external things actually and at the end at the end of the day like in the last day for example, your performance evolved into something else. But mm -hmm. how can you explain those changes? Because I think the same will happen here with your works collaborated. Uh, I can say that like uh, Monica, Monica's uh, videos, she used uh, ordinary people, gave them uh, Barbies and they uh, include her uh, art. And when I'm making my uh, performance, I had uh, uh, some bad things happen. For example, my uh, toy sword broken, or for example, my uh, clothes things broken. And these all uh, things uh, makes me an idea to, and I, and then I add to the videos to fix something. This is this is also performance, and it has a uh, some kind of meaning in the video also. And if you were there and during the performance, we could see you uh, like preparing your stuff yes. or mm -hmm. everything. And it, that is also an, a huge impact on your work, I think. Yes, definitely. So. Because some, uh, I exhausted and uh, I lied on the floor or some people came my area and checked my stuff also. And I, that was also interesting. To, because I realized that when you made a performance, you also uh, make a distance with the uh, viewer too. You only the person, if they came in, much more closer or not. This is interesting. Uh, that was an experience for me. Because you hold the camera if you want like that or also put uh, much more further away. So you already had some distance between the audience and you, but you could see the audience and you can have the reaction but yes we have face we were face to face yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. but it, in your case actually it, it was different because you couldn't see when they were shooting the video and you couldn't see the reaction instantly you could see afterwards after you, you had the video so you you get the video and then you realize what they shoot and then start to maybe work on it or you just get rid of the idea i don't know so this kind of delay of information 
how did changed your workflow or did it change your work workflow or you you like to be in front of the people see the live reaction or this one that you prefer most and then that's why you are doing it but i'm doing it both ways so um maybe in the workshop you you have it's uh, it's 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 it it depends of the circumstances but um there were both ways that like either people were individually making the, wor the works and then I also don't interfere with those works. And then um, there is a situation that the conversation when, when I see reactions um, immediately. And I had also like maybe a thought that I wanted to ask you um, because it's like there, when there is a performance, it's already like in the context of an art and it's already like an art piece. And mm -hmm. so it's like a, making an, from an art piece another form of an art piece. So I guess that's also a difference from like great gathering footage from um, not everything I suppose what I collect it's being considered an, a work. It's or I, I don't know, it's something between this archive and what's what's what we're calling a work. What so it, it's a nice way to think about it. Um, maybe to finish the conversation, I don't know. I have one last question for both of you, which is what do you expect from the workshops and what do you expect from this um, exhibition in your process of artistic creation or you, do you ex expect anything or not? Maybe you can start or it's up to you. No, I mean, I hope it will be fun. Yes. And, <laughs> uh, and uh, no, it would be great if something resonates or if, if something will happen. But if not, then it's also OK. And uh, yeah. So we'll see on Saturday, I think. Because <laughs> we'll the, 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 the workshop will be on Saturday in here. And then uh, we'll see how how will be the reactions and then how people will uh, try to collaborate or how things will turn out, I think, to be a creative and productive process. Because even now I like to go there and <laughs> play with the Barbies for making some experiments with the, uh, the videos. Don't or, hesitate, let's go. <laughs> I'll do at some point. I'll do at some point. Uh, any questions? Maybe we can, we can uh, finish with the questions if there are any, and then we can uh, finish the conversation. All right, this is a good sign, I think. <laughs> that makes, I think, this uh, whole conversation really intense, I guess. So people start to think about it and maybe we'll have um, some questions later. But we are here, so we can just have... Of course, of course, of course. Chats. And then there, there we are all open to any conversations, any questions afterwards, so don't hesitate. And then we'll see in, uh, in Saturday for the workshop. Uh, I'll continue in Turkish to wrap mm -hmm. up everything. Ee, geldiğiniz için herkese çok teşekkürler. Ee, dediğimiz gibi cumartesi günü burada bir e, workshop da olacak. Merve ve Monika'nın birlikte yapacağı. E, bundan sonraki süreç için hem e, ikisine de ulaşabilirsiniz. Herhangi bir sorunuz varsa yanıtlayabilirler. E, bana soracağınız bir şey olursa ben de yanıtlayabilirim. E, geldiğiniz için, katıldığınız için herkese çok teşekkürler. E, bir ay boyunca e, istediğiniz zaman sergi gezebilirsiniz. E, Bu 15 gün dediğim gibi Monika için daha yoğun bir şekilde devam edecek. Sonra Merve'nin içine odaklandığımız bir süreç olacak. E, i̇ki tarafta farklı interaksiyonlara sahne olacağı için ikisini de gezmenizi kendi adıma öneririm. E, hepinize çok teşekkürler. Teşekkür ederiz. <gülüyor>